What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be going over uh, this uh, design challenge that somebody posted up. Somebody asked for a video for it, so we're going to take a look at it and uh, put one together. Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm an engineer with Forge Product Development. Forge helps clients start and grow their businesses by providing affordable access to effective engineering resources. Monday through Friday, we offer a free engineering helpline live on our social media platforms, where we help answer questions from people just like you. The clips that follow were taken from one of those sessions. I hope you find it useful and enjoy. So first thing I'm gonna recommend whenever you're doing a surfacing project, especially if you're given a um, industrial design sketch or some type of reference to go off of, is map out your surfaces. So looking at the sample part that was submitted, first thing I like to do is just go along and we're going to trace along our axis of symmetry. So if we look at this part here, we can tell that we have one plane of symmetry that kind of goes along here, right? And then we have, and then that would come up over the back side of this, like this, right? And then we have another plane of symmetry that would cut through here. And bear with me as I try to draw this in using a mouse. But so that's kind of the cut lines where our uh, planes of symmetry will cut this shape. And we'll realize that there's two planes of symmetry, which means we only need to build one quarter of this, and then we'll be able to use mirror um, to create the rest of the geometry. So now that we have our symmetry planes done, we can start going and trying to figure out where our surfaces are on this part. So the next part I like to do is I'll go in and I'll start tracing out, get a different color here. I will start tracing out the um, sharp corners or edges that I see, right? Because I know those are gonna be the edges of surfaces. So one, like the major style line on this wraps all the way around like this, and then its sister line wraps around like this as well. So we know that's gonna kind of define um, a lot of our surface here, right? Now, when we're trying to build surfaces, we wanna to try to find the easiest surfaces to create um, and then build those first and then build our more uh, advanced or curved surfaces later, right? So it's primary, secondary, and tertiary surfaces are like the technical lingo. But basically it's what are my big, flat, easy to create surfaces? And then what kind of references can I build off of those to build the more complex surfaces later, right? So in this design, what I kind of elected to do was I treated this as um, kind of just one big revolve here, right? So we've got a surface that comes down like this, right? Now that you now you can see, right? This is our symmetry line. We've got a big flat surface here that's just a simple revolve. That'll be easy to create, right? Likewise, if we look under here, it looks like this one wraps pretty much all the way around. So this whole thing is pretty much a surface. Now we have a symmetry plane line that actually comes down right in the middle of this. And if we, since we can't see inside of this part right now, we're going to uh, kind of use this bottom part to kind of imagine what the inside of this pocket would look like as well. So that symmetry plane is just gonna come down and go like this, right? So now looking at what might be next, so you can see we've got this big surface down here, right? And we have this one up here, but you can see that right about here, this surface starts to like twist up and transition, right? So it probably, if we're looking at this line here, this edge of this surface, it looks like it starts to do its transition somewhere around here. So we're just gonna put a line right here to indicate that after this point, this surface starts changing a little bit, right? This edge no longer is the big revolve edge that swept all the way around to here, right? It's now starting to come up where and transition like this, right? So. We can also see that looking at on the inside, it looks like this edge here, which is the same as the top edge, keep in mind, wraps around like this, right? And now this here, this inner surface here, which we can see coming in down here, also looks like it's ending right about here, right? So this transition here would come up, right? So you can see now, 
where some edges might be um, need to be created. And that's really what you're doing in surfacing. You wanna figure out where your edges are, what curves can you can create that will define your surfaces. And that's why mapping it out like this uh, can be helpful. I know it looks a little bit confusing, but once we get into it, it, it should make some more sense. The sister surface of this one over here is actually over here, right? We can see that this is also just a revolve coming around and then right about here starts, um, it starts to do the transition thing, right? So I think we've got a decent map here. Let's get into SolidWorks now, and we will uh, take a look at how we go about building uh, this type of part. So we're going to pick a plane. We're just gonna use the right plane in this situation, and we're going to start with two circles. And we know that these circles are going to be bring this up for reference. So we know that these circles are basically going to form this shape here, right? We've got one circle here and another circle here, and that's gonna be basically the side view of this half of our, of our part. So we've got two circles. We're gonna apply some dimensions. And if we look at our part again, we can see kind of that the way we are going to model this is there's actually our asymmetry plane in a way that runs right through the middle here, right? It's not a symmetry plane as in you can mirror across it, but if you were to build half of this part, mirror it over and then rotate it, it would line up the way that you want, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna treat that plane as it pierces this point right here, which in our sketch is this point on our, um, on our smaller circle. So we're gonna make this horizontal, and then we're gonna make this point here coincident. And now we'll have a plane that runs through the, um, kind of pseudo symmetry plane of our part. All right, so next part is we're going to draw the other half of this uh, part and, and viewed in the same plane. So it's basically this half, but just rotated on its side, right? So we know we're gonna be doing the revolved surfaces here and revolved surface here. So we're basically drawing the sketch geometry for those surfaces. So first thing that we're gonna start with is a line representing our axis of rotation. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to draw in um, basically the section view of that revolve. So it looks something like this, right? Okay, so we can go ahead and we can uh, define this a little bit better. Um, for one, we can add, we know that we want the inner hole of this revolve to be the same diameter as, as the smaller circle. So we can go ahead and create a line that represents that, that diameter, make it equal. And I like using the sketch lines versus adding dimensions um, and because I think it's a little bit more robust uh, it seems to be in my practice and it keeps uh, dimension the sketch cleaner instead of having a whole bunch of dimensions um, You have relationships and, and lines that you can kind of um, hover over and see how they're they're linked So I kind of prefer that method um, So we're going to select the midpoint of this and we want it to be on our axis of rotation And another thing that we know is we know that we want um, this uh this circle here to be the same size as this circle. So we can go ahead and make this equal. Now we also want this whole thing to be on the same plane, right? So we can try to select the origin. It's not going to give it to us, but it's gonna give us the point that's right there, which is also fine. Um, so now we have to have a conversation about how these surfaces come together. So you can see that in our sketch, we've got this big surface here and this concave surface here, right? And they're meeting along this red edge right here. And when you go to draw something like this in surfacing, or when you're doing a surfacing based model, and you know that you're gonna put a radius, you're eventually gonna radius and blend this big surface and this big surface together. Um, if you draw your sketch like this and create your surface, 
you don't really know where your radius is going to end up, right? You, you might put a larger radius on there and then your part is gonna come back and be, um, a, there, a lot of this edge is gonna be cut away when you put that radius on. So what I like to do is I like to add a face to help me control where that radius is going to be and what it's gonna look like. Basically, I'm gonna sketch in the size, but I'm gonna leave myself a flat face to form the surfaces to control that radius. It's a little bit, it's kind of hard to explain verbally, but um, once we do it later on, you'll be able to see what the effect is that I think is really helpful. So next thing we're gonna do, we, we know that this radius, or the radius that um, is gonna be defined by this surface is actually gonna blend into a radius that goes up here. We can see that in the sketch or in our um, in our map as well, right? This radius, which is on the inside, eventually ends up on the outside. Likewise, here it's on the outside and ends up on the inside. So we want the flats here, or at least the radiuses that they our flats are going to represent to be the correct size, so that flows nicely. So we're gonna have another one up here, right? And what I wanna do, what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a split entities tool and I'm gonna split these entities right here and here. And the reason I wanna do that is because I want two line, or I want to basically trim off this corner, but I wanna make sure that this surface is intersecting these lines at um, the same angle so that when the radius is put in, uh, it's not cutting away one side more than the other. So we can now link these here. And a good way geometrically to make sure that they're the same angle is to just make these two lines equal, right? It makes a triangle with two equal sides, which means these angles are now equal and won't change. Now we can start um, putting in the circles to kind of visually show what the radius is going to be and also allow us to dimension what the radius is exactly. We're just making these tangent, right? These are basically the radiuses that we'll put in later. Um, we won't model the, or we won't create the radius directly. We'll use a tool, but we'll use these surfaces to kind of control where they are and what they're doing. I'm going to make these for construction just to clean up the model a little bit. Uh, right, so now let's talk about how big this whole thing is going to be now that we have um, some good uh, constraints in place. So for one, we know that this part is going to be uh, ro or located uh, left and right across the sketch by this circle here, right? So we know that when it's spun around or when we revolve this, we want the circle over here to be coincident with this one. So we're gonna do just that. We're gonna mirror this circle over here, right? Make this construction. And we're gonna come over here and eventually we're gonna make it concentric, but I'm gonna leave it this sketch over here for right now, um, just so it's, a, this, it's out of the way um, of this one and a little bit easier to see for sizing some of these things. So I went and added, since we know that this circle will eventually uh, lock down the geometry once we make it concentric over here, I'm going to lock the center line, just temporarily put a fixed mate on here um, so that I can see what else needs to be dimensioned to, um, to lock down our sketch. So we can see that this part here is still moving, right? So we know that since this is a, a revolved part, we know that the distance from here to here is going to be equal to this distance here because this surface when revolved is actually going to be the outside edge uh, of that forms this circle here when you uh, flip the part and look at it from the other angle. So we're gonna make this line here and we're going to do the same thing that we did for the little circle and just create a reference line that we can create equal. 
right? And so now that locks down a little bit more of our geometry. And now the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna define what this radius is, right? And then we also want this radius to be the same as this radius, right? So something like this. Now we can define the height of this, right? That's the next thing that needs to be um, locked down. It should lock down the entire sketch. And so we're gonna define this angle here just cause something like that maybe. And then we have this fully defined, but we also still have this fixed mate on here. So we wanna remove this. And now we know that all the geometry is good to itself because when it was fixed, it was all constrained. So now we just need to locate this big part of the sketch. We can come in here, add a concentric constraint. One additional thing that might not be uh, obvious at first glance is if we look at our reference, right? We actually have a transition here that we can see in this sketch and we can define the curve that um, is gonna create this transition. So we know that it's gonna lead from the bottom here to the to this edge here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a style spline. Something like this. We're going to put it so that it starts transitioning right about here, right about the center of rotation, right? And we want oh, we need one more control vertex in here. So you can just right click insert control vertex, right? So now we can make these collinear, we can make these collinear. It's basically setting up uh, curvature continuity, right? We can make all of our um, lines um, the equal length, right? Now we want this line here we want this line to be tangent here to this circle. And we know that we want these lines to be horizontal. All right. And now the only thing left we need to control for is the angles between these, um, between this center segment and our two curvature continuous uh, collinear segments on the ends. And so we're going to use the same uh, triangle trick as before, right? And we're gonna make these collinear as well. And that will lock down our curve. And now the question is, where do we want it? Um, where vertically does it need to be oriented? And it actually needs to be oriented horizontal from here. Perfect. So now we have what will be this curve here. We have one view of our circle. We've got the section view over here of the part and we're ready to start creating some surfaces. Because our part has some symmetry, we're actually gonna duplicate this sketch because we know that it's a flipped orientation, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this sketch uh, using a derived sketch, which is a very stable technique when it comes to duplicating geometry. I find it's much more stable than say creating a block and then importing that into a sketch, especially when you're recreating the entire sketch, definitely use derived sketch. So the way to do that is um, we're going to create a derived sketch. So we're gonna take our sketch and we're going to select the plane that we want it on and that sketch, and we're going to insert derived sketch. So now what that's doing is it's taking the original sketch that we created and it's duplicating it onto the newly selected plane. Now you can't edit the derived sketch. You can only manipulate its orientation and where it is on the plane. Um, but in this case, we don't need to edit it. We have the main sketch. We can do a derived sketch to create a very stable copy and then use that as reference to create our surfaces. So now that our, um, our sketch is in here, we need to tell SolidWorks where it goes, right? So what we want to do, it's gonna bring in our sketch and you can see this blue one, we're actually on the new plane, right? With a duplicate of the original sketch. And now we want our circle part, since we'll be looking at this from a different orientation, we don't want the circles to align, we actually wanna flip them. So we want our circle to be coincident here, right? And then we can flip this around like this. 
and make this pierce through here. And now we have the identical sketch. All of that work that we did is duplicated. So our sketches have now created all the geometry that we need. Now we're gonna start getting into how to create some actual surfaces. So first thing we're going to do is we're gonna create this sketch here, right? And we're going to use the derived sketch that we created. And we're just gonna go in, create a plane, right? That's on that sketch. And we're just gonna use convert entities to bring in that geometry that we wanna revolve. So it's this center line and then the inside, our flat surfaces here, and then these flats out here, okay? We're gonna create that. We're gonna revolve it 90 degrees, right? So it comes around like this, which gives us this surface here. And next we're gonna create another um, revolve, and that's gonna be our inside surface. Next up, we're gonna do the same thing just on the other side. So more reference sketches. We're gonna rotate at 90 because we know, thanks to our surface map here, that this surface, once it gets past 90 degrees, it starts distorting and becoming a blend, right? So we know that this is the stable part. So we're only revolving what we know is stable and flat and easy to create. Next part is the same surface that we created on the other side. Um, so next up, we need to create a plane. And what we're actually doing is we're creating a reference. Um, so we need to draw in the blend between this edge here and this point here. We're gonna use this spline right here, right? We need to locate it on a plane that's in the correct location. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a, a plane and we're going to make it parallel to the right plane and we're gonna use a vertex to locate it. And we're gonna use the sketch vertex that's right here. So now that we have that plane, we can create a sketch on there and we can use convert entities to bring in our circle and our uh, spline. So I'll show you how we do it. So we're gonna convert entities we're gonna bring in our circle and our spline because we need this whole guide curve here, right? So that'll bring in both. And now we only need from this point here of the circle. So we're gonna draw that line so we can use our split tool to erase most of the circle. And then we can also use it to just nip that away as well. And then we're left with this nice curve here. Next up, we're gonna do a surface fill of this little piece in here. And the way that you do that is we're just using the um, sketch that we just created plus these two edges here to fill in this little piece. And we can click merge result and that'll knit it into our surface. Now next up, we're gonna do a boundary surface. Now we know that we have this whole connection here, right? We've got this edge that's now open, which comprises this and this, where we now need a surface from this edge to this edge, because we know that this surface and this surface meet each other, and we know that we have this guide curve of how they do it, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a boundary surface that joins them. And that's basically taking our straight line, which we know describes our radius here, and the other straight line that we know describes the radius on this part. And we're just allowing SolidWorks to build the blend between the two, given the edge that we know we want to keep, which is this pink line right here. Our selections are going to look like this. Uh, so we're going to select here, and we're going to select this edge here, and then we're also going to select our guide curve, which is going to be this. Now, if you just select it, it'll give you an error, because what you need to do is you need to hover over an edge, right click, and go selection manager. And that will allow you to multi-click um, edges um, as a single entry in this box. So that's what we have right here. We have select a group. So we're selecting a group of edges and we wanna, we can use this little thing right here to select the tangent edge, which will bring it all the way down to our end. And now when we select okay, it puts in an open group instead of an error because before, if you just select one portion of the edge, um, the software is saying, hey, that little edge that you selected as a reference doesn't connect your two other 
uh, edges in your first direction. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing as we did before, but on the other side. So we need to create a plane. All right, we can turn back on our one of our sketches here. We're gonna create a plane from the top plane up to the tangency point on the top of this circle, right? We're projecting our spline and the edge of our circle up to that plane to create this guide. We're, we're gonna do another surface fill. The same selections as before, the two edges and the sketch. We'll knit it in. Now we're doing the boundary surface. So we have that guide curve again and we have the uh, two um, edges here creating the transition of that fillet. Now we're going to knit everything together. So we're going to use a surface knit command, select all of our pieces, create one body. And now we're going to do a boundary surface for the final patch here. So now we have one body and we have this big opening, which is our most complicated surface, right? It's our blending surface. And we're going to create that using a boundary surface. Add a boundary surface feature and our selections for this are going to be this edge here and this edge here. And then we're going to do this edge here and this edge here. And what we want to do, we want to make sure that we turn on tangency um, where it blends into those primary surfaces. And then we can hit solve. All right, so now that we have uh, one large surface body, everything's created here. All we need to do now is uh, mirror it across our symmetry planes that we've already described in our surface map earlier. We're going to create a mirror feature. We're just gonna do a mirror body. We can knit this one together, and then we're gonna go the other way across the other uh, plane that we didn't select earlier. We're gonna leave this one unmerged because we're gonna use a knit surface feature to create it as a solid as well. So we're just gonna mirror this across, and then we're gonna go, and you can see now that we have two surface bodies. We're gonna create a knit surface feature select those two bodies and then we're going to click create solid and merge entities and that's going to give us a solid body feature from those uh, two surface bodies so what we're going to do now is we're going to create the fillets along these edges and you're going to see where the payoff for spending the time creating this little flat in here which represents our fillet and helps control its size and location so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a fillet and we're gonna use a full round fillet. And because we defined in our sketch the size and location of where we want it to be, when we select these faces to create the full round fillet, we're gonna get a fillet that is consistent in size and we were able to control the location. It hasn't uh, cut away any of our primary surfaces. And now we're gonna create the second one. We're gonna do it the exact same way full round fillet and we're just selecting the different faces to get the other loop and now we have two sets of full round fillets right so there you go that's how um, I would create this part there's a little bit of surfacing in there but there's also a lot of just thinking about how to build the structure of this shape really what most of this project comes down to and, and in my experience what a lot of surfacing projects comes down to is having a good map and understanding where surfaces need to be created in order to have it the part turn out the way that you want right if you're getting an industrial design drawing or a picture like we had to be able to go in and trace out where those edges are, where are they going to blend into each other, where do we need to provide uh, additional information, like that little spline we had in the original sketch, right? Um, being able to see those things from um, the picture phase all the way through will make your surfacing projects a lot easier. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. If you learned something, please leave a like. If this is something that you guys want to see more often, please subscribe to the channel. If you have something that you want us to look at, leave leave a comment. Please let us know what you guys want to learn and work on. Well, I hope this is useful to you and I hope you have a good week and I'll see you in the next one.